This is the story of the god of Aleppo, which was taught to me by our friend Leaf at Penzik last year. Oh, that's where I've heard this before. Yes, she does an amazing uh, job of it. This is my attempt. Oh, it's so bothering me. <laughs> so, to start with, Aleppo was a farmer. He was not especially strong, as farmers go, nor was he known for any great feats of dexterity, nor was he possessed of any dazzling intellect. He was a farmer, and a very dutiful one at that. Every morning, he would wake up, he would tend his fields like he should, and when harvest time came, he'd bring the excess to town and trade for goods and services and things he needed to maintain his farm. Well, one day, when he was packing up to head home, he overheard a pair of merchants talking, and one of them mentioned something about if you build a little shrine and you pray at it, there's a chance a god might come live in it. <clears throat> and the idea kind of appealed to Arepo. It was just him on the farm out there, and it would be nice to have someone to talk to from time to time. So we packed up and decided, oh, maybe we'll give this a shot. So when he finally got home, he went to the far edge of his field, and he built a little shrine. Put some field stones together, flagstones for the walls, a nice piece of slate for the roof, and a little stone altar at the very front. And he stood at it, and he stared, and he went, oh, that's right. So he pulled out some incense, he lit the incense, he made a little offering, and he said a prayer. Nothing. He says, well, maybe it works better in the morning. So he went to bed. The next morning, before he started any of his chores, he went out to the little shrine, and again, he lit the incense, he made an offering, and he said a prayer. And again, nothing. And he figured, well, sometimes seeds take a little while to germinate. Maybe this takes some time, too. So every morning, without fail, he'd go out to his shrine, and he'd light the incense, he'd make an offering, and he'd say a prayer. And this went on for about a week with nothing to hear about it, until, of course, one not terribly special day, the sun came up, the birds were singing, he went out to his shrine, and as he said his prayer, he heard a small voice from somewhere inside the little shrine. It said, um, hello, hi, uh, this is a nice little shrine you've built. Um, I don't really have a place to stay, so if it's okay with you, I would like to stay here in this nice, cozy little shrine you've built. And Arepo said, oh, uh, well, yeah, I suppose that's okay. Uh, it would be nice to have someone to talk to. Um, what, uh, what are you the god of? <clears throat> and the little little god inside the shrine kind of shuffled his feet. He's like, well, I'm really not all that important. Um, I guess you could say I'm the god of uh, a thousand little nothings. The way sunlight filters through the forest canopy, the sound of a butterfly's wing beat, the way the leaves rustle in the trees when the breeze blows. These are, these are the things in my purview. I'm not that special, but if it's okay with you, I'd like to stay in this little shrine. And Arepo said, yeah. I think I'd like that. So he and his little god conversed, and then he set about the chores of his day. The next morning, same as before, he went out, he lit the incense, he made an offering, he said a prayer, and he and his little god had a talk. This went on for months, sometimes maybe even years. They talk about all kinds of things, how the crops are progressing, what the weather is like, what might be happening in town, because he didn't get out there very often. And then one day he comes out to his shrine and he does his little <coughs> ritual, and the little god inside says, uh, Repo, I have to warn you about something. Um, there is a drought coming. It's a pretty big one, too. Um, if you want to, look, if you want to pray to another god to help avert this disaster from your farm, I won't be mad. I really won't. It's not really anything in my purview, and I can't do anything about it. So if you go and pray to another god, I totally understand. I won't be mad. And Repo scratched his chin, and, well, what are you the god of again? Little God kind of rolled his eyes, like, well, I'm, I'm, the, the, I'm the God of the, the sound of snowflakes falling in the winter. The way that cold air hits your face when you step outside in the morning. That strange boundary between the field and the forest. These are the things I'm the God of. A thousand little nothings. Really, if you want to go pray to another God, I totally understand. No big deal. <clears throat> and Arepo scratched his chin and said, no, I like you. I'm going to keep praying to you. Well, just as the little god had warned, the drought came. The crops dried up, the rain stopped falling, half of Arepo's field shriveled to nothing. He barely had anything to take to town, much less to sustain himself. It was a very lean year. But, <clears throat> just as the drought had come, the drought passed. The rains returned, Arepo sowed new crops, and life carried on. Arepo, every morning, even through the drought, 
He'd go out to his little shrine, he would light the incense, he would make an offering, and he would say a prayer. And he and his little god would talk. And this went on for a few more months, until the, the little god reminded, uh, got Arepo's attention and said, Hey, Arepo, uh, remember the drought? Uh, you handled that pretty well. I was impressed. But i got to warn you about another disaster coming. This time it's a flood. And I'd hate for anything to happen to you. So if you want to go pray to another god, someone who can maybe change the weather patterns or something, I would totally understand. I wouldn't be upset at all. I mean, we're good friends. I wouldn't bother. Wouldn't mind at all. And Arepo scratched his chin and said, What, uh, so what are you the god of again? Oh, Arepo rolled, the little god rolled his eyes and said, Arepo, I'm the god of a thousand little nothings. The way candlelight flickers in the room, the way, the, the strange feeling you get when you enter a room you've never set foot in before. All of these things are what I'm in charge of, but none of that is going to avert the flood. So go, go talk, go pray to some other god that can actually help you. And again, Arepo shook his head and said, No, I don't think I will. I like you. I like our arrangement. I'm going to keep praying to you. <sighs> okay, fine, Arepo. Just like the little god said, the rains came. <clears throat> the water levels rise. Most of Arepo's crop got washed away. Part of his house got washed out. He had to climb up into the trees of the forest to save himself. But, just like before, just as the rains had come, the rains left. Repo climbed down out of the trees, re-sowed his fields, patched up his house, and again he prayed to his little god every morning. And this went on for a while more. They had a fine life together. Repo was a pretty solitary guy, but at least he had someone to talk to. And one morning, not, not terribly special morning, he went out to a little shrine, and before he even started his ritual, the little god spoke up. Repo, this is important. I know there was the drought, and then there was the flood, but this war is coming, Arepo. You need to pray to a god that can save you and protect you and your farm. Or at least leave. Go someplace safe. Do something. I can't protect you from this. And Arepo kind of shook his head and went, I don't think I will. I like you. You're my friend. I'm going to keep praying to you. And the little god is like, Arepo, we don't have time for this. These soldiers don't care. They're more relentless than the, than the rains, and they're more devastating than any drought. They won't stop, come on their way through. But Arepo is a creature of habit, and he decided no. He would pray to his little god. And just like his little god had warned him, the war came. The soldiers came. They burned his fields to the ground. They destroyed his house. Arepo was a strong farmer, but he's no match for trained soldiers. The tools of the field are no match for the weapons of war. They nearly killed him, and poor Arepo crawled across the ash fields that he'd tended for so long. He crawled up to the altar, smoke from his fields curling into the sky like the incense. The wound on his forehead bled onto the tiny altar as an offering... <coughs> And as Arepo lay there, his last prayer was to his little god friend that he simply didn't want to be alone. And the little god held Arepo's hands, head in his hands, and the little god watched Arepo's eyes close. And the poor little god cried, for he was powerless to save his only friend. Time passes differently for gods. What we, can, what we perceive as decades is a breath to them. So it wasn't long before Arepo's body was not but bones, barely recognizable in the underbrush. The forest crept in and swallowed the little shrine. Years passed, and children would go play in the woods, and they'd see the little shrine, and they'd laugh at each other, like, if you leave flowers at it, you'll get good luck. But aside from that, poor little Arepo's god was mostly forgotten. But even still, every morning when the sun would come up and the light would filter through the trees, the little god would poke his head out of his, out of his shrine as far as he dared, and he would call for his old friend, Arepo. But Arepo wouldn't answer. But remember how I said time passes differently for gods? So it never really dawned on the tiny god how much time had in fact passed until one day the little god poked his head out of the shrine and said, Arepo... Are you out there, buddy? I miss you. I miss our talks. 
I hope you're okay. And to the surprise of the little god, he heard a familiar voice. The voice said, I'm here, small god. And the little god turned around in the shrine, going, are you behind the shrine? I can't see you. Come around to the front where I can see you. And Repo said, no, I'm, uh, I'm in here with you. And the little god was aghast. Oh, oh, Repo, they made you a god. Oh, that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. Nobody deserves this more than you. Oh, what, what, what did they make you the god of? It's, I bet you it's something amazing. And Repo scratched his ethereal chin and said, I am the god of friendships forged over time and bonds unbroken, promises kept. And the little god went, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm so proud of you, man. Nobody deserves this more than you. I appreciate you stopping by my little shrine on the way into town. I mean, I'm sure you'll find plenty of followers there. You're, you're pretty awesome. And Repo shook his head and said, no, I don't think I'll go into town. And the little god sat there for a second and thought and went, Oh, I know, you're headed to the city. There's lots of people there. They've got proper shrines, big ones built out of marble and oak pillars. It's a be a great house for you. You'll love it. You deserve it, buddy. And again, Repo shook his head and said, Nope, I don't think I'll go to the city either. And the little god sat there aghast. Oh, wow. I'm impressed by your ambitions, friend. You're going to the capital? They have massive marble columns, huge shrines. I hear they bring God's offerings on the hour. It's a great place for you. Nobody deserves this more than you. I, that's awesome. And Arepo shook his head a third time and said, No, nope, I'm not going there either. I'm going to stay here with you. The little god said, Why? I said, Well, I was made the god of friendships forged through time, bonds unbroken and promises kept. And you, my little friend, are the god of Arepo. <laughs>